Hello friends. Welcome to the off-grid cabin. Welcome to St. Bernard Acres. This video I'm going to try to explain in simple, easy, quick terms the layout of my solar system. I've joined uh, Facebook groups that deal with solar and tiny houses and cabins and such and I get tons of questions. So this is going to be a simple, quick run-through of what I've got and what it's capable of. Now, I want to start off with this disclaimer. I am not an electrician. I'm not an electrical engineer. I'm not any of that kind of stuff. Don't take this as some kind of expert instructions on how to set up a solar system. Right? You follow my lead at your own risk. Don't come back and say, well, Joe told me to do this. Joe's telling you, I spent weeks, months researching this stuff, learning this stuff, watching videos like this. Hopefully I can pay it back some to help some people out with what they can do with their solar system and what I would do differently, I'll add. What I have is a thousand watts. I've got four panels out there that are 250 watts each. That's all I have. I can, it's daylight right now. It's probably 10 o'clock, 1030. I can run, I got the TV going. I got my internet going and router and blah, blah, you know, all that kind of stuff. I also am, if I can show this, charging my power, Echo Flow power station. I've got a blue eddy behind it. I'm going to charge all off the solar. So, and that's while the sun is out and hitting my panels. Now, you see, I've got an air conditioner. No, the solar will not run my air conditioner at night. I don't have that much battery capacity. A lot depends on how much battery capacity you have. I'll discuss that when I get out there. But right now, I'm just going to show you the basics of my setup and how I wired things to try to help people out. All right, so now I'm out here at my solar panels. What you see are four 250 watt solar panels. These are 12 volt panels. I bought them used from Santan Solar for 50 bucks a piece. I bought 10 of them. I'm only using four of them. Let me show you how these work and remind you once again by not being an electrician or an electrical engineer, I am likely to use the wrong terminology on some things. Do not hate me. <laughs> Do not try to correct me or tell me I'm an idiot. Just listen to what I say and do some research. I can't tell you more than that. Do some research. All right, these four panels, you see my wiring. Don't say anything about my temporary rack here. This was just put up as a temporary basis uh, to get the front behind the cabin cleared out and put more up there. These are wired in series, then, then in parallel. Series doubles the volts, but the watts remain the same. That's all I can tell you. Parallel. The volts remain the same, the watts increase. Okay, there's the basics. Now, why do I have these wired in series and then in parallel? Well, these create 24 volt. I have two, basically, 24 volt uh, solar panels here. The reason you do that, my charge controller, I have a 60 amp... MPPT charge controller. Amps times volts equals watts. So my 60 amp charge controller at 12 volts coming in can only handle 720 watts of solar. I have a thousand watts of solar hooked up right now. By running them in series and changing it to 24 volts, now I have 60 amps at 24 volts. I can handle 1,420 watts of solar going to the charge controller. 
That's why you do that. And it's more efficient. You have less voltage drop on the run. Higher the voltage, the less voltage drop you're going to wind up with at the end. So, these are wired simply. Series, then parallel. They run along the ground. Once again, <laughs> this was a temporary setup. So the wires come from the solar panel. They went under the cabin because they used to go into that hole there where the fiber optic cable goes. But I tore down an old shed and I saved the material and I built this, I call it a power shed. Now the wires go into the power shed. And in here is where the magic happens. This is my 24 volt solar system. It runs the electric in my cabin. That's what this does. I will try to explain it as best as I can. The solar panels, the positive and the negative, come in through here. The negative goes up to a bus bar. The positive goes up to this circuit breaker. There's a 20 amp circuit breaker here that then connects it to the charge controller. I have the circuit breaker there so that anytime I need to do maintenance on this system, I can turn off the solar. No power will be coming to it. This is my 60 amp charge controller. From the charge controller, the positive goes, the negative goes to the bus bar. The positive goes to a 100 amp breaker. And then goes down to the battery bank. Again, I can isolate things here to do maintenance on it. That's why I have the breakers in there. Now, and if something shorts out or something goes haywire, it'll protect things. This is my battery bank. It is dirty. It needs to be cleaned off, and I will do that. This is a 24-volt, 345-amp-hour battery bank. These are wired in series and then in parallel. These are 12 volt, 115 amp hour batteries, six of them. They're Everstart Max deep cycle batteries from Walmart. They were hundred bucks a piece. Don't laugh at me. It's what I could afford. I've had enough people laugh at me about these over the years. In series, to make them 24 volt, Remember, in series, the volts double, the watts or the amps remain the same. So, to make this 12 volts into 24 volts, positive is connected to negative on these two batteries. So, what I've created is one 24 volt, 115 amp hour battery. These two batteries, I did exactly the same. Positive to negative, I got a 24 volt battery. Same on the third set. set. Now, I have three 24 volt, 115 amp hour batteries in my bank. Now let's hook them up parallel. The voltage remains the same. The amp hours increase. To go parallel, you go from negative on this big battery to negative to negative. Positive to positive, to positive. That's parallel. That increases the amps. So now I have a 24 volt, 345 amp hour battery bank. 115 amps each. Can't explain it any differently. The positive and negative from this battery bank go up to these bus bars. Those bus bars are here, so everything wires into it. It makes it much more simple and easy to work with and cleaner. So, the positive goes to a switch. I can turn these batteries off before it gets to the inverter. I also have a 100 amp fuse in here in case something happens. I've had people tell me, oh, the fuse has to be before the switch. The switch has to be before the... I don't know. This has worked for three years, so I don't care. <laughs> it's, the negative goes to a shunt, 
which goes over to this meter so I can see what's going on with my system anytime I want to look. This tells me my batteries are sitting at 29.101 volts. The batteries are in float mode. They're just basically, they're fully charged. It's 11 o'clock, they're fully charged. I'm using 72 watts of power. Two and a half amps. That's because my refrigerator compressor has kicked on. So that is running, and the compressor doesn't run 24-7. It kicks on for 10 minutes a couple of times an hour. So, 72 watts is running refrigerator, TV, internet, and router. That's all it's using, which is pretty dang good. What the inverter does, it takes the 24 volts of direct current, DC, and turns it into 110 volt AC which is what you need to run the house. So that's where that happens at. This is a 24 volt, 1200 watt, pure sine wave inverter. Why 1200, why only 1200 watts? Because that's all I need. You know, do not listen to these people who think they got this great system because they have a 5000 watt inverter. I can't use 5000 watts. You know, every inverter uses your battery bank to stay running. The bigger the inverter, the more it's going to drain from your batteries just simply being on. So size your inverter to what your needs are. I don't need 5,000 watts. If I ran 5,000 watts of energy at one time, my batteries would last about 20 minutes. And that'd be the end. I'd be done for the day. So, remember that. Don't listen to how you got to have these giant inverters. You know, I could get away with 900 watt inverter if I wanted to. My air conditioner, my window air conditioner, during the day when the sun is hitting the panels and I'm pulling in 800 watts of, of energy like now, you know, that's all I'm using. My batteries are fully charged, 100%. Where's all that extra solar going? I can send it to my window air conditioner. It only uses 550 watts. So during the day with the sun out, I can run the air conditioner. It's not taxing my battery bank. You know, you think about the solar that way. You have 800 watts coming in. You don't need them for the batteries. Use them. That's why I look at it. <laughs> so that's what the inverter does. Size it to your needs. Don't buy the biggest because you can't. Plain and simple. I could get a 150 amp charge controller. I didn't need one. I'm not running a, you know, 10,000 kilowatt solar system. So, size to what you need. Plain and simple. This is all upgradable later if you need to. Now, this, you may wonder what that is. Again, 24 volts. I have a 12 volt pump for my water system, 12 volt lighting. It won't run, you know, those are DC items. My 12 volt DC water pump, my 12 volt DC lighting, it won't run on 110 watt, you know, AC, 110 volt AC. It won't run on 24 volt DC. So I had to buy what's called a step down converter. This takes the 24 volts and drops it back down to 12 volts to go to this fuse block here. The fuse is out for my pump because I'm not using it right now. And if a leak would occur or something, the pump will run until the barrels are empty. So why take that chance? I just unplug it until I put in a switch. That's the basics of the system. Now, how do I get power to the cabin? You may wonder. I also have a generator sitting in the power room here. In case I go three or four days with no sun, no power, rain and snow, you know, and I need power to run the cabin, I can always fire up the generator. 
This yellow cord is an extension cord that plugs into the side of the inverter there. This green board with everything on it used to sit inside the cabin. Now I've got it out here. The inverter, I would have set it differently so I could look at it, but that's fine. That cord, I can plug into the inverter to get 110, or I can plug it into the generator to get 110. How do I send it to the cabin? That extension cord comes out, and I installed a 30 amp RV receptacle here on the back of the cabin. That is wired into the service panel, the breaker box, inside the cabin. That's where my receptacles are wired at, my switches and my lights, all my 110, like a regular house. It just gets its power instead of from the grid. That's why I'm off grid. Instead of getting it from the power grid, it gets it from the solar panels through that wire. And like I said, if I need to run the generator, just unplug it from the inverter. I plug it into the generator. That's the solar system. I had a $2,000 budget. I came in my $2,000. Now, what would I have done differently three years later? I would not have gone with 24 volts. That was unnecessary for me. I didn't know that. I'm not running any distance with this stuff. So I don't have to worry about voltage drop. By converting these to 24 volts, I added expense that wasn't justified. The 24 volt inverter cost more. The step down converter cost. You know, I didn't have to have that. I, would, I could have bought a regular 12 volt inverter. Those are cheaper, but those are things I learned. You know, when I upgrade this, I would like to go with lithium batteries. Three years ago, lithium was a lot more expensive. Now it's more affordable. I could possibly change these out. These work fine, so I'm not gonna worry about it. But today, if I was designing this system again with the same $2,000 budget, I could get three lithium batteries and have more battery capacity than these six. So, things to think about, you know, when you're doing this. But that's the, the one thing I would change. Everything else, it works fine. I'm not worried about it. You know, I had a budget to work with and this is what fit in my budget. Oh yeah, the drawback to lithium is they're temperature sensitive. By that I mean if they get to a certain temperature, they quit coldness, they quit working. Or if they get too hot, they quit. To, to protect themselves, they'll shut down. Those cheap Walmart flooded lead acid batteries sat out here for three winters in a metal cabinet where those blue water containers are. Spent three winters in that metal cabinet with no insulation they never quit working they didn't care that it was 10 below outside you know they just worked fine so you don't have to have a heated room or any of this kind of crap for them you do have to have them outside because they do vent gases so yeah lithium you could leave inside if you wanted to if you have the room so there are advantages and disadvantages to both that's all I got to say about them. So there's my little recap on my solar system. $2,000. That was my budget. I think for $2,000 I could do the same thing today, but I could do it with lithium batteries. And I would could buy one of those inverter charge controllers. To where I don't have all the separate stuff. It can all be in one. I think I could afford that. I'm not sure. But this works just fine. And those batteries, I've got two batteries. If you have followed my channel or, or whatever. A few years ago when I bought this place, I had an RV. And when I learned solar, when I first learned it, I had two 100 watt panels. And I bought two of those same batteries in 2014. Right? Those batteries are in my shed still and still. 
still work today. If you take care of them, you know, I've had so many people make fun of me because I've got those lead acid. That's all I could afford, but they all want to make fun of me because I got those instead of lithium. Well, let me tell you what, I still got a lot of money in my pocket because that's what I bought instead of buying lithium three years ago. So, ha ha. <laughs> but yeah, today at today's prices, maybe it's more affordable. If I replace this system in a few years, then obviously I'll look into all of that. But I hope this was a little bit more understandable and you see how easy it is to do. But do your research. <laughs> That's all I can tell you, folks. Don't just listen to Joe. You get it's a lot of other stuff you got to do. But this is Joe out here at the Off Grid Cabinet, St. Bernard Acres. Appreciate y'all watching. I'm out.